Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to switch it up for this one and simply just cover the three best decks of all time that are also playable in standard right now. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. That way you have a good understanding of what's strong, whether you want to play the best decks themselves or if you want to know how to count to them. Let's see what these strong decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And starting us off, we have the fan favorite and also classic deck of Lurk. Coming in with a win rate of 100% and a play rate of 100%, it is doing pretty good right now. Its good matchups includes every deck in the game, and its bad matchups include zero decks in the game, so I didn't even figure to put up the graphic. The main theme of the deck is to just attack over and over and over, you put dudes down, you attack. If you ever manage to find yourself on a defense turn, you can also just attack, since you have the Snapjaw Swarm, which helps you do that. And while you're attacking, it basically increases the attack of the rest of your dudes in the deck that want to attack. So as you're attacking, you basically get attack, right? Does that make sense? Uh, that's kind of the whole thing. You just want to like swarm and play your dudes that have attack in order to attack and gain attack. See, it says right here, when you attack while I'm on the top of your deck, I lurk, granting lurker allies everywhere plus one. Uh, plus zero max once per round so if you try to rally and double dip that's not going to work however there is a double dip mechanic in the form of rexai so that's really cool even um even without the being able to proc lurk once a turn rexai herself grants everything plus one so it just kind of works that way so that's really cool what we want to do is basically have a lurker on top of the deck in order to do that we predict predict is a really strong mechanic um to work alongside lurk they kind of just go hand in hand, so it's a good thing that Lurk is part of the Shurima region. Otherwise, it wouldn't be nearly as good or as consistent. So we're just going to swarm our fishes down. We're going to play very aggressive. However, we're generally going to have like a mid-game finish, either using Rek'Sai level or Pike champion spell in order to make the opponent surrender. Or we're also going to play the Xerath or Dunebreaker while they just have a bunch of attack and also Overwhelm. Pretty easy to play out. I would recommend this deck for like beginner-ish players. Main concern is that it could be rotated, so maybe it's not like super worth investing in, especially since the Xerxereth is an epic. I mean, that's pretty expensive, but this deck also runs some pretty spicy cards. So let's talk about the non-lurkers. We have the two Forsaken Bakai to predict, the two Chronomancer to predict, the Ruthless Predator to turbo level the Rek'Sai. Sometimes getting that plus two goes a long way. One quick right of negation to stop really big spells. And also, very spicy, two Siphoning Strike. This is actually really cool. You don't have to target a champion with this, but it does buff your champions, and that includes Rek'Sai. So this is a variation that's going to basically turbo Rek'Sai as soon as possible. So if you like Brood Mommy, if you like her being on top of your deck, um, then you definitely want to play this version because you will get to Rek'Sai and you will get her going like really fast. So that's really nice. It's always good to have Rek'Sai on top when we have our predict and stuff, and we basically just get to utilize that. So yeah, that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. So for this example game, we're gonna be fighting Set Jack. Pretty fun deck that I also enjoy, so that's pretty based. Let's go ahead and mulligan away Rek'Sai and Dunebreaker. We want Rek'Sai to be in deck or at least on top. We always want Rek'Sai on top. Same with Pike, we kinda want him in the deck too, but it's unfortunate we top decked him. We'll be fine. We want to play our Sharkling on defense one, and then on attack two, we will predict manipulating the top card of our deck and giving us a Lurk proc, ideally. Maybe even finding Rek'Sai again. Or we can all in and play Sharkling and Xerxai Hatchling, right, and go for board. That way, we can just, like, assume we're gonna hit a Lurk proc and get more damage this way. This is actually, like, a little bit more efficient. We do not mind Metal Babs. Just do not put the weapon on her, please. Okay, you put the weapon on her. I see how it is, but we are wide. We do hit. So it's okay that we did not predict. We get to swarm and be pretty epic. Hammer Snout, that's a pretty good card. Let's go ahead and give this Metal Babs vulnerable. That way we can try to take that weapon off. We don't have a Brash Blocker right now, so it'd still be smart for them to attack. I'll be a little mad if they have a second weapon, by the way. Double Metal Babs and double Bar Knuckles, like, oh, they're gaming. I was about to say, that's like the best thing that could actually even happen to them. I can't really do much about it. I mean, I could play a Pike spell next turn and do nothing. 
But I think I'm just going to Chronomancer, see what happens. Show us the top deck. It's another Pike. Oh my gosh. Alright, whatever. Chronomancer. Um, Dunebreaker. Because we, we want to hit Lurk. We know how to no Rek'Sai is so sad. Alright, so we're going to hit a plus one. So let's go ahead and grab that with the Sharkling. And send it. These pikes are so awkward, by the way. I actually have no idea what I'm going to do with these. It might be play pike and just have bone skewer mana angle. Because this is just so incredibly weird. Main issue will be set on attack 5. I don't know what to do about that either. It might be a little doomed if they manage to pull pike. I'm not sorry, not pike. The pike is my guy. Okay, set, but no sets. That's good. We'll play pike. Alright. Third bar knuckle also makes sense. What I think I'm going to do is pass. We don't really need to do the bone skewer unless a combat is uh, started, so who cares? Who cares about all that? You can have all the weapons and coins and stuff in the world. I do not care at this moment. Okay, I care a little bit. Oh, I care. Oh my goodness, I care quite a bit now. This is kind of scary. Tag out. No, thank you. Uh, on the way out, we are going to kill that 9-2 Metal Babs, maybe. Maybe the 8-1 instead, because this is um fresh. And we can block that with our 2-3, and it's also vulnerable, so we're going to kill the one that we don't have that much access to. And then we're going to take the 4-3 to face. I can't really stop that. Alright, so now we're going to top deck Pike, which is not very good. Mm. 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 Okay, I'll take four. Um, okay, so we have a bit of an issue. I want to play Pike again. That's the issue. I want to do quick attack over the vulnerable. Place your bets. Alright, just don't draw anything useful. Coin. And... And, and, hello? You're so quick on the coin and then so slow on the next card. Don't tell me it's another concussive or something. It'd be kind of annoying. Whoop. All right. Oh, it's heavy metal. All right, grab you, attack with you. Um, That's not really worth. I'm just going to keep my 2-3 back. Oh, we hit Rek'Sai. Nice. We might be able to do a Blood in the Water play. And our Pike is also gaming. So it would seem. Rek'Sai. Hmm. I mean, I definitely want the Blood in the Water, so... I guess I'm just going to do that first action and what target face. Jack, Hello, Jack. Uh, no coins in hand, right? Rek'Sai? A little surf and turf, I agree with all that. Um, I could target you so that you can't value block 2-3, but I don't think you even would anyways. I'm just gonna send this. TBH, I'm just gonna send it and hope they don't have deny. Let's go! That's Lurk Gaming right there. That's why we have 100% play rate. All right, you're going to be really excited about the next one. The next one is something I've been asked about quite a lot recently, and I just haven't had the time to really cover this deck. This is More Lurk. So this is a really, really cool deck. I'd recommend it. It has a play rate of 100% and also a win rate of 100%. This is another one of the decks, just like the last one, that I would recommend. Just based off stats alone, it's popping some like really good numbers right now. So the main theme of this deck is to attack quite a bit we want to spend most of our early turns developing uh these units called lurk units i don't know if you've heard of them yet so they go on the board and then they gain a ramping attack stat kind of like hallow so think like gwen but instead of very pretty goth girl it's just a bunch of nasty fishes so we it's it's a pretty good trade i think um very good trade-off 
So we want to get the, um, the the nasty fishes out here and we're going to just send it over and over and over. And in this deck, we have extra ways to send it on defense turn, which is super nice. So being able to turbo ramp our lurk procs via the blood bait and snapjaw swarm is going to be a major priority in this deck. Um, other than that, we do have some non lurkers uh, to talk about. That is the three Forsaken Bakai in this deck. We're not just running two, we're running three. That way we can mid max our early game, make sure we have something playable. Like, look how aggressive this curve is. So, yeah, this deck is going to be very good for that. You want to, like, take advantage of those, like, really slow mid range decks and just kind of, like, beat them outright with really strong aggressive one drops that also have a ramping attack stat. So, hey. It's pretty good. Um, this one's a little niche. I don't think a lot of players have really picked this one up yet, so I'd recommend it. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. All right, for this game, we're going to be fighting Viego Bard, probably Maduli Printer, as per usual. Pretty fun. We are attacking on odds, which we love to see. We'll keep the one drop and the three drop for odds. Pitch Pike and Zosareth, because we want them in deck, especially the Pike. We want to be able to predict into him to get his uh, spell instead of his actual body. So we're going to be playing Sharkling on turn one. No surprises there. And then next turn we'll either set up double one drops or we will play Hammer Snout. Oh my god, guys, we're so good at this video game. We just hit Rek'Sai on turn one without even predicting. Dude, that's awesome. No predict lurker Rek'Sai on one is so good. All right, let's play the hammer snout. I'm willing to actually take that two to face. Oh, wow. They didn't even attack. Nice. So let's go ahead and play the uh, color or Chronomancer Shark. Let's do Chronomancer. And we'll grab um, probably Blood Bait. Yeah, let's do Blood Bait. And then Sharkling. And then 2-3. Two, Hello? 2-3, two, grab 2-1. Yeah! Full send. Look how much damage we're pushing, guys. If we hit another Rek'Sai, I don't know. We might just be the best player on the server. I'm telling you guys to pick up this deck as soon as you can. This deck is really good. Um, Very niche, though, like I said, in the deck rundown. Like, no one is playing this, and I don't know why. Alright. Mmm... Um... Yeah, there's the blood bait. I kind of just want to like manipulate the top card of my deck. It doesn't really matter what it is. Yeah. Uh, oh. I kind of want to grab the Bakai, but that's kind of bad. Let's do the hatchling so that we can play like hatchling collar and just kind of call it a day. A 4-7. Wow, that's a big bard. Do I even want to put damage on him? Not really. It's not worth sacrificing a board space. I think we're always happier just doing like collar. And seeing if we can hit Rek'Sai. Watch this. We always see second Rek'Sai here. Ready? Let's see how good we are. Oh, we hit Pike. That's fine, too. That's fine, too. And then we're going to play the Hatchling. I'm not going to Blood Bait, then. This is kind of like a waste of a card to pick up, but to be honest, it could have been anything. We didn't really care. There's some crazy world where we hit Rek'Sai here from Predict, and then we'd have, like, the Blood Bait Wombo combo, and we'd be very happy, but this is fine. There's nothing you can do to stop me. For five mana? Bruh. Bruh. Yeah, okay, you better kill your own bard. That makes sense. I'm still full sending it. These are weak poo-poo bards. Like, what are you going to do about this? Yeah, yeah, start blocking. You're dead. Dead on turn five, guys, just because we hit Rek'Sai so early. See? This is a good one. Second hay spike? Oh, no, are you living? Oh, I was... Ooh. Never mind. We're still in it. They were on double hate spike. Very good gamer. I kind of want to do that blood bait now. Funnily enough, I think it's uh, Snapjaw Swarm first action. Force them to block. Look, they're at one health. And we know Pike is the next card. So it's not like we're ever going to be on the rally to finish off the game. We're just going to swarm. Because we're cringe and awesome. Yeah, <laughs> basically a lockdown. That's how you play Lurk right there. And for the third and final deck, I have a bit of a curveball, a little bit of a wild card for you guys. I don't think anyone's even seen this deck. This one's an original, okay? This deck is called Lurk the Most. It's really sick. So I think what we want to do is get on this really fast before it becomes super popular. So I'd recommend picking this one up right away, like Turbocraft now. 
All right, let's take a look at the stats. We have a win rate of 100%, guys. Think about that. It always wins, okay? And a play rate of 100%. Uh, we got triple blood bait here, double forsaken Bakai, okay? Triple sharkling, triple hatchling, only two chronomancer, call the pack, hammer snout, swarm, uh, Rek'Sai, call... Sorry, if it sounds like I'm getting excited, it's because I really am. Like, this, this deck is so fun. This deck excites me like no other, especially the other two in this video. So if you guys have made it to this far into the video, I would say disregard the first two. They're not as good as this one. This is definitely the one for this video to, um, to play. So smash that subscribe button if you agree. We have the, the Collar, the Blood, the Pike, the Xerth Threat. So we're just turbo lurking. Look, we only have four non-lurk cards in the entire deck. So if you want just like super consistent Pike, super consistent Rek'Sai, this is how you do it. You're never going to whiff lurk because you literally can't. Look, if you type in lurk up here, this is as many cards as we can run in the entire game. We're just triple down on all of them. Just made, That's it. That's the whole deck. And then four non-lurkers. So it really is that easy, guys. Uh, would recommend I've been playing it a little bit in my off time I'm trying to keep it a secret though uh, I don't really want anyone to play this deck a lot I think um, I just kind of want it to be on the down low so this is me telling you guys that this is a secret so yeah definitely uh, drop a like on the video and play this deck for me alright that's it for the deck rundown now here's a live commentary game and for this example game, we're going to be fighting the ever-popular Volibear Elder Ramp deck. Now, this deck was super, super famous for a short time before everyone realized that it's not very good. But uh, it's still really fun. I, I like seeing it. Uh, didn't this deck used to run Heisho Mina? That's kind of like the entire premise, and then Heisho got hotfixed. But it's still a really good way to learn uh, Ramp and stuff. So let's play the Sharkling. And then on turn two, we'll play Chronomensa. And then we're never going to whiff Lurk. Like, look at our hand. Our hand's so good. Uh, Chrono. And we'll take a peek here. Looks like we can have a Pike spell. Not super valuable in this matchup because they barely even play units. Like, they want to ramp, you know. Uh, they might play the Sigil card on turn 3 and then I'll have something to maybe slice. But, eh. I'll just give it vulnerable. Don't really know. I don't remember what's in this deck, to be honest. This, uh, Bully Elder... Abomination. I'm kidding. It's actually pretty good. Oh, yeah. Some ramp. Ramp, 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 ramp. We're always going to hit Lurk anyway, so I don't need to do this on attack turn. I'm always kind of down to just set up dudes. Set up dudes. Set up bodies. Play that too. Why not? I don't really need spell mana. I don't care. We could open Force A Harsh Winds. Like, let me tech check how much damage. 8. 10 damage? If we hit Lurk? Yeah, let's do that. Grab a little 10 real quick. Mm, 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 mm. Hey, let's go! Dead on turn 4! That's gotta be like a new record, guys. And that's it for this week's decks. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So yeah, to wrap things up, these three decks are incredibly powerful and all very unique in their own ways. There's also a ton of skill expression and depth to these decks and the combos that can be pulled off. Especially when you do like the predict Rek'Sai and then put Snapjaw Swarm on top of her with Blood Bait after you already attack. Like it's so sick and probably one of the most complicated combos in the entire game. You'll feel really good when you pull it off. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.